guest of WH twenty twenty one. I think all lowercase, no spaces. Or is it twenty? Hey Jody, is it twenty twenty one or twenty sixteen for the Wi Fi passcode? Twenty sixteen. Okay, guest of WH twenty sixteen. Was <laughs> it just guest of WH twenty sixteen? All lowercase, no spaces. Oh, isn't it guest of WH twenty sixteen? Yes. All lowercase. Mm -hmm. Can you hear us, Chris? Okay. Can you hear me? You can hear me? Oh, sorry. What was that again? It's guest of WH. So guest of Woodland Hills. So it's guest of WH. 2016. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah, we're jealous. You're always on a beach. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't five hours ago, Ted, was I? What's that? I was with Ted about five, six hours ago. Yeah, yeah, he was actually up here today comm uh, communing with us, breaking bread and Could sharing you, stories. Could you That's right. Wrestling down and having him come here and meet in person. You know, like a headlock. You know, snow, St. George. I think it was a rough decision for him, but. <laughs> it's not much better down here right now, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think. <clears throat> Time wise, we're ready to go here. So I'll, I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, Jody stepped out, but I would like to thank her for all of her work and what she does with, with uh, putting all this together. And <coughs> she was nice enough to print this agenda tonight, and I appreciated that. We would like to acknowledge and welcome aboard Aaron Lowe. Yay! Thank you, Aaron. Oh, okay. we we're, <laughs> oh, we're, we're good. We're just glad you're here, and thank you for your willingness to serve and be part of this committee. We have no minutes uh, to approve of our past meeting. I couldn't find any. That probably on me. I couldn't find anything. I so. know we did them, but it was a long time ago. So. Yeah, it was. So <coughs> we'll just start anew here and, and move forward. Um, Chris, we'll turn some time to you uh, on the latest budget numbers. Okay, so sitting at 50% of, the, or excuse me, another screen popped up here, 58.33% of the year. So these are through January 31st, 2024. Our revenues in the general account are nearly 80% collected meaning we, we got a chunk of our property taxes in December, which shot that up and we'll receive still some more revenues this year. Our general government expenses and everything else are riding just at or below budgeted. So we're doing super well this year with uh, revenues over expenses. So that is a very positive thing we have. Um, there'll be some big expenses coming up, um, especially when we start working on some of the roads and West Lofer, and we've been working with the mayor and Wayne and Ted on getting uh, some of the West Lofer items lined up. Um, and so you'll probably be seeing something next month and a half, two months on that, getting that finalized. Um, I'm going to break the water out a little bit differently. So the water account, we're collected almost 70% on, once again, almost the 60% year gone. So our revenues are higher, which is what we need to be, especially for the two new loans that we've received over the past couple of years to replace some of the water line and roads in Woodland Hills. But we're only 22% spent on, expen on expenses. Um, that will start changing here. As Ted has gone through, and I can let him explain this a little more, but Ted has gone through the well house up top. It is... Um, in not good shape and it needs a lot of work done to it to bring it into compliance and to bring it into something that um, will be good for the citizens of Woodland Hills. So he's working on getting um, bids, quotes, um, plans drawn up, uh, consulting, and it's just a lot going into it to get that 
um, in a better place for the city of Woodland Hills. And Ted, do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, I think so. You know, the well's been being worked on for several years. Um, I, I would say it's 75% there, but there's a remaining, you know, 25% and some pretty significant items that need to be upgraded, changed, uh, primarily power. We have a backup generator there that <clears throat> hasn't been put in service for, I think since the well's been there, it's just been sitting there under a tarp because it's not been hooked up to power. It needs different switch gear. Uh, hooked up to the fuel source, stuff like that. So there's just a lot of miscellaneous items. We're also switching the well, and I don't know if Dave will remember this and Janet, but we're switching the well over from single phase to three phase power. <clears throat> and so the course of that will also take some funding to get that done. Um, so I'm going through everything right now. Our, our plan is just to do one project. So I'm working on getting a cost from a consultant, engineering consultant that can put together a plan set and bid set. Uh, contract documents, put it out to bid to contractors, get one contractor to just come in and finish everything up. This will also kind of correlate with our SCADA system that we're upgrading so we can actually can read and get alarms on our water system and stuff like that through our phones and stuff. So uh, just, just really trying to take this and just get it done so we have a nice finished well and working SCADA system and stuff like that. I, I really support the SCADA system. We're using that as a soldier <laughs> summit. We didn't have that really helps us monitor our tank level. Yeah, yeah, there. And we do have a SCADA system. It's just not working. It hasn't it hadn't been upgraded updated for approximately 4 years. And so I had them come and look at it and they the the CPU we had was was just old enough they couldn't even update it because it wouldn't accept the updates. It was, so we have to get a new CPU. Uh we've already got that. That's being uh upgraded right now. And then so we've got the SCADA, it's just not all tied in correctly. I can't read some of the levels. I can see the tank level, but we have other things hooked to it that I can't read or I don't get any alarms on my phone, which is what we want to be able to do. So if something goes wrong, we're alarmed. And So is the bid you're getting up there, are they turnkey? Are they going to be the whole project? Yeah, the, the, probably the majority of what needs to be done is electrical. We have a lot of panels up there that are unfinished, SCADA that's not quite all the way done. Um, we have some things that were, I took a couple of residents up there who were masters of these trades, electrical, master electrician, Alan Wakefield, if you know him, uh, Mark Sovine, and, and kind of went through everything. Uh, probably I'd say the majority of what's got to be done is electrical. Uh, we got to replace some of the, the work that was done and then include some new work. Um, there's just some coating of bare steel that needs to be done to protect it. Chlorine room, uh, it, it, there's some state, the state uh, has certain uh, code requirements on the way you construct your gas chlorine rooms and it, and it wasn't built quite correctly. Um, so we've got to do some rework there. So just a bunch of miscellaneous things, but what we want to do is get all one bid package, one contractor and just get everything done. And it's, you know, it's, we've got, uh, uh we've already got a quote from SESD for the three phase power and transformer and stuff like that. So we already approved that. Yeah. It's we not approved it and it actually went down. Uh, just last week, they updated it, and prices had come down a little bit, so it actually dropped by thirteen thousand dollars. Oh, sweet! Are they actually going to be able to come in and do it, or are they going to be short on supplies like everybody else I hear these days that's trying to get three phase power into their buildings? Yeah, so that's a good. good and you use it comes down to transformers. Transformers are generally about a year to sixty months out, uh, sixty weeks. Sorry. Um, however, they already have the transformer. So I think they, they actually, they recall, they just happened to have one in their yard, like one we needed. So we said, good, put reserved on it and save it for us. And, and so. Yeah, don't tell anybody else that they've got transformers. Yeah, I know. I know those transformers are, are we've been ordering some for the, the job I used to do. And, you know, they were, we got, we were getting quotes of 64 weeks to get those. And so wow. 64 weeks. Yeah. The best we had was 48. Um, but, but I think we've already got one for this one. It's like anything. The transmission went out on my Jeep, and it was going to be a year for the one dealership to get their hands on it. But they said some dealerships have them. Yeah. So I called everybody in the state until I found somebody that had one, and that's where I took my Jeep, and they fixed it in a week. So. Yeah, we just got lucky with the SESD. They they happened to have one in their yard that would work for us, and. That's amazing. Yeah. Start by just driving a Jeep. <laughs> hey, Chris. Keep going. 
Uh, that's it for the snaps of any on the water. Okay. Anything else that you want to go <coughs> with us? Uh, budget wide, no. Everything's looking, like I said, revenues are over expenditures, and we do have a few big ones coming up, but um, nothing that our current budget can handle. It is getting to be budget time again, Mike. I don't know how the mayor wants to proceed with the finance committee's help. Our goal is to um, not increase taxes this year, um, increase the tax rate higher than it is today. And so that's kind of a goal that I've been given a direction on keeping keeping things that way. So that's what I'm gonna be working for. Yeah, that would be helpful to clarify. <laughs> yes. Get our, get our direction and what he wants us to do. Yeah, I will. So I went to that uh, Bills and Bagels this last week. Oh yeah. Aaron was there as well. Um, one of the most disturbing things I heard was one of the bills that is being proposed is that any property tax increase would require a vote of the citizens instead of just having the um, the uh, truth in taxation hearing like we currently do. They actually want to take it the next level and, and require a, basically a, a vote for that. Um, Honestly, maybe that would I could change things. Maybe that would work for big cities that you know don't change their property taxes very often. But you know we've kind of been under the philosophy that we increase a little tiny bit each year just to keep pace with inflation, and that because tell them about what happened when you first got in because it hadn't been raised for several years. Yeah, it hadn't been raised for several years, so we had. <coughs> I mean, if you want the full story, the mayor proposed something and did not tell the council um, what she was proposing. And it was something like 18% increase, some crazy number. Um, we, Once we kind of got a chance to actually look at the budget, and it, to be fair to the mayor, what she was doing was um, doing what she'd been told, which is, you know, be open, transparent, propose it to everybody at the same time. Whereas I think had she talked to the council ahead of time, we would have been able to say, yeah, we're not doing that, we're not doing that, we're not doing that. We would have cut some things beforehand. <coughs> anyway, nevertheless, we had a very contentious truth in taxation hearing. And uh, just that one. That was Actually, the year he was up for re-election. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was the year that we were up for re-election and I was like, what are you doing, Mayor? You're trying to kill me? Um, fortunately, cooler heads prevailed and everything worked out, but it was, yeah, people don't, you know, I think most residents understand little tiny increments. You come to them with an 18 or 19% and all of a sudden they, they hate your guts and rightfully so that's, that's a heavy hit for anybody. But I also, they're, they're very short sighted. I mean, and they, if you let them vote, that's scary because they'll vote to not raise them, obviously. And that's very short-sighted because the city has, I mean, I look at our roads and we just keep kicking the can down the road, you know? We keep not doing some of the major things that need done because we don't have the money. And then if that happens, that's well, I scary. Think, I think what, again, I'm trying to represent both sides. I think what the representative's goal was was that cities would do a better job of communicating these are what our needs are and this is why we're asking for this. So it almost turn it into like a campaign kind of a thing. So if you if you want a property tax increase, you got a campaign. It's actually similar to what schools do today, right? They campaign when they want to raise the property tax for their bonds or whatever. They They send out the flyers, they send out the you know, the details on what the needs are and so forth and so on. So I think that's kind of, in his mind, that's where he's going, or at least what he's proposing. I personally hope that gets shot down, because I, I don't think it, it, it just adds additional complexity for small cities is like this, ours. Is this on the county level, the state level? No, state. state. Who, who was it that was proposing it? Oh, whoever the dude was on the left-hand side. Burgett or? Norm. Yeah. <clears throat> I wasn't there, so I don't know. Yeah. 
He hasn't been my state. Yeah, state. He hasn't been my friend for a while. <laughs> I didn't like some stuff he did last year either. So. So Chris, how are we on our legal expenses? Interesting. So as of right now, the the this there was a court case on Thursday, Friday last week. That was covered by the insurance money still. Um, internal, our uh, our city attorneys haven't had to use them as much, but I'll get you that real quick. Um, the judge didn't make a decision yet. He's going to come back with his decision. It's because they open the fire hose and blast so much at him. But... Yeah, and I, I think he was really just... We talked to actually our attorneys today just briefly to see what they felt about it, and kind of their consensus was that he just wants to make sure he's got his, all these ducks in a row before he dismisses it, but likely it'll go that way. Oh, good. But, is, this the one, is this the one remaining against Corbett? Yes. But they were they were shooting out, you know, um, <clears throat> we're just poor residents, and and we don't know what we're doing, so we need more time to get all of our legal ducks in a row and... Yeah, and it was them that filed, so it's kind of interesting, but uh, Corbett's attorney was very uh, well-versed in the law and basically just demonstrated to the judge that if you rule on these claims that they have filed, you're basically setting precedents in Utah against building officials that has never been done. Um, so the sense is it'll probably, I think, majority think it'll get dismissed. There's a few who think maybe he'll dismiss several of them, but a few may go a little further, but. So it can, it, in budgeting for next year, are we looking at, are we going to have to carve out? But it, the court, actually. It, the court is a public record. It is yeah. a public record, so you're okay. I know I was sitting there listening to you thinking. Well, that's my interpretation of it. I, I can't <laughs> say what he's going to do, but that's what I can hear. No, you're good, because that was all public. That all happened in the courts. Yeah. That wasn't, like. Well, so it's a little, a little too early until the judge makes his decisions, but right now that portion of the legal is covered by the insurance up to 100000 and we're about 70000 72000 into it. So we still got a chunk of change left there. Um, as far as the city attorneys, our budget this year is 75000 and we're at 28000 spent 50% of the year. So doing, doing okay there. Be nice to get that down to a budget of 10000 well, but... And Again, from a from a financial standpoint, I don't think we'll ever get rid of the city attorney amount, nor should we. I think we, you know, whether it's <clears throat> Summit Creek development agreements or other development agreements, I mean, we're going to need legal assistance yeah, for absolutely for almost ever. The piece we're hoping to get rid of is the litigation part. And I, I would I would think as a finance committee we should plan ahead on unforeseeable legal expenses that. We ought to have a little bit of cushion on. We, we do have some other citizens and potential issues out there, so. Citizen. Yeah. Well, then we should plan for those and make sure we One known, money. plenty of unknowns. Yeah. He's in our court. Back in the woods. <laughs> so. Have any of the suits been resolved? All of them. All of them. <laughs> Well, and it started against the city with Corbett as kind of a side sideline. The city part got dismissed, so Corbett then took front and center. Um, but it sounds like that one is going to go the way it should. So. But he was a city employee, so he's indemnified. As he should be. As he should be. So are, were all the cases dismissed? Yeah. All but one, or all against the city, yeah. Okay. That's good news. That's but dismissed, years. not awarding legal fees back to the city to recoup all the expenses that we've had. No. Right. Yeah, because we can't recoup those. State law doesn't let cities yeah. recoup legal expenses. You can't go back against a citizen. You just have to take it. Yeah, that part sucks. Yeah. I guess welcome to being a city, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've learned a lot, <laughs> right? Sounds like a, pro, a not prosecuting, a 
plaintiff's attorney could set up a whole practice of, let's find ways to sue cities so I can make money out of just arguing it, because I'll make money regardless what happens to the case. Yeah. Well, that's what made this one so difficult is since they were pro se, which means they didn't have to pay a lawyer. They, they were just filing and filing and filing and filing. Representing and, themselves. And representing themselves. Oh. That's what pro se means. Right. right. Um, and so. Their attorney quit. And they, so they had just. Uh, quit. quit. Disbarred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, OK. Maybe. I don't know if he actually did. I, he, he, he was disbarred, then he appealed. And I didn't hear how the appeal went. But anyway, so they were able to just keep suing the city. And then we had to defend ourselves. And that cost a lot of money. Well, from a finance point, and I just think we need to make plans accordingly of any type of foreseeable lawsuit. <coughs> we're the city, we're going to have to represent ourselves and make sure that we have money available. Yeah, I so think we'll have to leave that money in there for next year. I don't think we can reduce it for now. The, the thing that's nice about categories like that may not seem nice, but it actually is, is if you don't end up spending it, then it helps you when you do have unexpected things like a road fall apart or whatever. Because so, yeah. we can just open the budget and yeah. move it around. So anyway. But if you budget, let's just say, $20,000 a year, does it keep increasing with the years we don't spend it? So we have 40 and 60 and 100, or we just no. sweep that out so we only have a cap of 20,000. Yeah, good question. So at the end of the year, city budgets have to be swept. Now, what does that mean? They do have to be swept. We can keep a certain percentage in savings, rainy day, whatever you want to call that fund. But all of the all of the categories have to be zeroed out when we begin the next fiscal year. But there's always a long list of things we need. So what we mostly have been sweeping it into are capital funds, which mm -hmm. you can carry over. So like you can say, we're going to build West Loafer here. We've got $50,000 left at the end of this year. Let's put all that 50000 into the West Loafer fund. And then it can sit there for years and years and years until we finally get the money to do West Loafer. And it has been. Good example, Dave. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I would point that out. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it has been years. It's my favorite pet project with Dave Pratt. <laughs> it's a, it's By the a, way, I, I, wanna, I didn't even mention you, Dave. We uh, appreciate you being here tonight. So. Well, I apologize for taking as much time. You're all right. Uh, going on in our uh, agenda here, we've got, I, I put on it the status budget for installing security camber cameras under our present budget. Do you, do you know the status on that? Did we get those installed because we had budgeted money for them? They're not done. They are, what, 50% done, Ted? Would you say mm. or 60%? Yeah, we, probably around there. Jody's really taken this one on to try and move this person along. Um, some of us do see the cameras on our phones. They're having a hard time linking it to the internet. So Dave graciously has been working with him to try and get at least one or two of the cameras on a YouTube or some kind of feed so residents can look if they're driving warm and see what the weather looks like. But um, David, I don't know how it's going with you, but it's slow go for the rest of us with him. Yeah, it's 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 slow. So where we sit currently with this um, is we I, I asked Jody to set up a meeting with you, Ted, myself, Brad, and then Jody. And what, so the problem is that the cameras that were installed um, the best way to describe them is they're a closed system. So they can connect to the city's um, system that does the recording and all that stuff just fine. What they cannot do is they cannot connect to another system. They're proprietary to the system that, that exists. So what we need to do is we need to install some, um, some cameras that support a, a protocol called RTS, R, RTSP, RTMP, RTMP. And then an RTMP stream, we can stream up to YouTube and just have a YouTube live channel forever and ever um, going. Um, 
The citizens really want access to those cameras. So is that, is so, that uh, more budget that we need to budget for? It, it is. It's not a whole lot. Can we exchange some budget, maybe? I know in our original budget we had approved uh, one, at least one camera location that I don't think we need. Well, here's what I would recommend is let's have that meeting and let's decide where we're going to put these new cameras. <coughs> that will also dictate how much they are. And once we know how much they are, then we can come back and figure out the money. Which but one I, do you I would think recommend we don't not need? worrying about the money yet. The one on Maple Canyon tank, I'm well. So I think Corbett had planned to put one on, had, had included in the package to put one at Maple Canyon, um, which is, uh, it's Salem-owned property. It's not our property. Um, I talked to Salem, and they're putting cameras there. So I was like, you know, why do we want to duplicate efforts? Uh, we may can just share a stream with them or something if we need to, but there's other discussions in the works right now that we may not even need. So my thought was we probably don't need a camera at Maple Canyon. Yeah, in fact, that was one that um, Brad brought up to me because that one was going to require some equipment to be brought in to get the camera up as high as it needed to be. And so if we don't need to do that one, so yeah, I, I would recommend that meeting. And then mm -hmm. with that meeting, we can kind of decide, okay, what are, what are the cameras at the city center that we need? And then also what are the other cameras that still are not in place and and we can adjust whatever we need to. He's, yeah, sounds... he's been super easy to work with, just n not super fast on the follow through. Response? Yeah, yeah, Brad. <coughs> he, he lives in Salem and he's a really nice guy. Um, once he knew that I was at least somewhat conversant in technical stuff, then he, he relaxed and he started talking technical with me and it was, it was, it was a much better conversation, so. We're good. Is right. the vision to make every one of these camera views available to the public? No, because no. some of them are on the wells, and I want, so we don't want. Is it just so, the one out here, like yeah. we had historically? Right. So we have we have we have the system that is in place today, and think of it like a security system. It's really designed for security. Um, the system goes to a server that's located here, records the video for. X number of days, whatever it is. Um, so, and that's for the upper well. We want one for the park. We don't have that one um, down by the mailboxes. And then we have like three or four here at the city center already. And those are working just fine. They work great. But we can't give the public access because it would, it, uh, according to Jody, it would interfere with our security. Like it would. Yeah, it's 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 all or nothing. You know. It's it's more it's more. Uh, how, how, how should I describe this? The cameras that are currently installed only work with the server that records it. What Brad doesn't want to do, and I agree with him, is he doesn't want to give the public access to that server. Yeah. And that's what we would have to do. And he doesn't want to do that. Don't blame him. So we install other cameras that can do, can just stream and they're, when one of the plows went down, Jody sent me a picture, like a shot from the ca camera, and I posted it, and every it caused a fury because everybody <laughs> wanted to know how they could get access, access to that view. And I was oh, like, wait, it's snowing oh, pretty heavy at the tank right now. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's well, up at the tank. I guess the question that I'm asking is, have we used all of our budget or just a portion of it for those security cameras that we have? We've, we've paid a half down, and so... Now with these adjustments, hopefully it'll be a little bit less. Okay, great. All right, moving on. Status budget of new snow plows. These are the bane of our existence. They're in, they're at, they finally got in. International made them. They've been delivered to, I can't remember the company in Salt Lake. They are outfitting the trucks with the plows, the spreaders and everything. We were in line, I think we were about 200 in place waiting for <clears throat> try getting them to bump us closer, but all 200 people in front of us want their vehicles done also. So they're thinking at the end of March, first of April, maybe we'll start seeing them. It looks like we'll have some summer trucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a, yeah. Pray for snow in May. And so we can put them to use. For, <laughs> yeah. For next, yeah. Uh, November. Yeah. So Chris, you were, it had been proposed that we were trying to maybe get one early. Is that going to work or? No. Okay. 
Sorry, I was typing. How what, one? What to do in right now? They keep um, down. Yeah, we about every time they go out, one of them breaks down for some reason. Um, no, for most of them we can get it up and running within the within the day. Um, we still have a former fleet service guy that is willing to be on call with us, and he's pretty available. That whenever one breaks down, he'll soon with a phone call. He comes up here. Craig. He, Craig yeah, yeah, Craig saved the day a few I times. I think I've had to call him about three times now, saying, "Can you help us?" And he's usually here within, you know, four or five hours, um, depending on the time that it happens. But um, they've all been, you know, minor things. They haven't been anything real major. Um, some of them have been operator error. Some of them have been equipment malfunctions. So various reasons. But usually we've been able, without a lot of effort, been able to get them running within a day anyway. But it's every time they go out, something seems to happen to one of them. Glad they're here. Budget stayed the same on it? Just so far, the, the, they haven't asked us for any work order changes or price changes. So, yeah. Behind you. The batteries are over here. No, it's not that bad. Oh. Yeah, just behind you on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, this one's for you, and it's the main water line phases two and three. Is, is there an update on that that we need to be concerned with as a finance committee? Um, not, not probably quite yet. So we had broke the water line replacement into three phases because we have about 12 miles of old six-inch water line that is really failing. Been in for almost 50 years now. Um, we phase two, right? it, well, it's all three phases. So we have about 12 miles of six inch failing water line with phase one. We replaced about four miles of it. So we got about eight miles left to replace. And <clears throat> this is uh, old six inch ductile iron pipe. And it just, it, it's been in the ground 50 years. And back in the seventies, when they put these pipes in, they weren't real cautious about how they did it. So it's, it's, they're corroding and failing. Um, luckily we haven't had any major breaks for a couple of months now. Um, so we, we broke it down into three phases, uh, each being about $4 million, three and a half to 4 million. Phase one was about 3.6 million to replace that four miles. We've got about another eight to go for about 8 million. It's roughly cause we've been doing the roads with them it's cause we, we pulverized and repaved the roads with them, the entire road. So they're about a million dollars a mile to do this work. Um, yeah. So we um, got about $8 million left of work to do between seven and 8 million probably. We, there's some funding that's coming available. We've heard about uh, through, I think it's the U S department of housing, but it comes through Burgess Owens office. So uh, we've got Carrie kind of helping us chase that down. We've got some money saved in our uh, water enterprise funds. And what we're going to try and do is take that money and use it as kind of some skin in the game, so to speak, and see if we can turn that into three or four or five million to do the next phase. Um, it likely wouldn't be, you know, if, if it was going to take us at least this year to get the funding lined up if it, when it comes available and if we get it, and then another you know, year before we'd start on waterline projects. But that next phase, are we going to have to engage the Rural Water Association of Utah to come in and do another Good, good question. Um, depends on the financing. If we can get this grant money, which is what it is, I believe, um, then we can hopefully replace it the next phase without having to raise, raise water rates. However, we probably really need to be looking at that for at least if, if depending on how much we can get out of the grant money that's coming out of, uh, if, if we can get some from the, through Burgess Owens office, if we can get enough to do phase two and not have to raise rates, that'd be great. But then we still need to be looking at raising rates for phase three. And we've probably got to, you know, we'll have to start that process soon. If we can get more money uh, through the grants and do a um, portion of phase three, then that could delay the rate, raise a little bit. But at some point, we're going to have to look at that again, likely. Pray for grant money. Yeah. <laughs> No, you have to apply for grant money. Uh, it, this grant money is not. No, it's, it's so that infrastructure bill, they've they've given out most of that money, and there's really not much left. There was about 50 million last year. The state had left to give out. We applied for that and and didn't get it. And I didn't. It was kind of a long shot. They they were really looking for 
Woodland Hills is an awesome community. We just have too many affluent people. <laughs> so that's what they look at when they start giving out funding. And our what they call our median adjusted gross income is quite a bit higher than the state average. So on average, people here make about one and a half times what the state average is. And that really makes it difficult to get grant money. I help that though. I'm now on <clears throat> Social Security. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't raise the average, well, we so. Need, we need more people to retire. Yeah. I'm working on it. <laughs> or probably have one or two people move out and it dropped quite a bit, but. We'll help all that we can. In our Why does the income of the citizens <laughs> affect yeah. the because what the, what the way that the state looks at it is it's it's a formula they use, but the, I guess the best way to explain it is the more money you make, the higher water bill you can afford. So there's a formula they use to say once you reach, and it's 1.75% um, of your annual income should be what you're spending on your water bill and <clears throat> per year. And... If you're below that, which we are quite a ways, they say, well, then you need to raise your rates till you hit that. If you're over that, then they'll give you grant money to keep you at that number. Got it. It's kind of the way they look at it in short. Yeah. 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 And, and there's lots of communities out there that are, you know, under, and so they tend to get priority. Yeah. Do you know, I worked with Stockton quite a bit in my other previous consulting life, and they were well under, and... As a result, they got millions of dollars in grant money, and so. well, under the next agenda item, then is <coughs> one of the main reasons we're here tonight. Is, and appreciate Ted coming and spending some time with us. Is selling of city equipment. And just turn the floor to you, Ted. And let you talk to us about that. We have sent letters, the letter out to everyone, so they okay. see that. Yeah, it's a fire sale. Just sell it all in this now. So. Um, we've got uh, some equipment that either we just are underutilized and we can find some stuff that will work better, and some we just frankly don't use. Um, and some that's getting a little bit old and needs to be replaced. So the thought process is maybe, so we've got Corbett's truck that he drove. It's a 2019 F-350, about 42,000 miles on it. It, it is, no one uses it anymore, and I, I won't be using it. Um, it just sits there, and there's no reason to have it sit there and get weather. Might as well get rid of it, sell that one. Um, That's the truck that angered the citizens so much. Yeah, and, which is which is weird. We'll talk about that here in just a minute again because I don't know that uh, the approach is going to not anger them again. But I know they're just not understanding the value of money. But um, <clears throat> are any of these trucks ones that we could use for plows? No, no, no not quite large enough. Yeah, they have to. Uh, so our plows are like five fifties. And this is a 350. The 350s won't quite push enough, heavy enough snow. Um, so the thought is we might as well just sell Corbett's truck, uh, get rid of that one because it's not going to be used. It'll just be sitting there. In addition to that, we've got the truck I'm driving now, which is the old fire chief truck. That's getting old, and, and it's a 2013, starting to, starting to see a lot of maintenance requirements on it. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got the... Maroon Public Works truck that was Corbett's truck he drove originally, which is a 2000 Ford. That purple one? Yeah, that purple one. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got a service truck, which is the one you've probably seen with the little tool things on the side and the little crane on the back. That's our service truck, which is also getting old and breaking down a lot. Is that the one with the snow plow on it? It does have a snow plow on it. That's the one they use to do the cul-de-sacs because it's small. The big trucks can't quite get the cul-de-sacs well enough, so they try and use this one to go back and get cul-de-sacs and clean them up. Um, mm -hmm. So we've just got a lot of equipment that either we don't use or it's aging. And we've also got a Kubota tractor that's up at the well sitting up there right now. And we've got a skidster down at the salt shed that they use to load salt into the hopper to load the trucks. Um, we were trying to figure out, and I've met with the snowplow group. Um, I've met with you know Chris and some of the public works ideas. And so some of the ideas we've been tossing around and we wanted to get feedback from the finance committee is selling Corbett's truck and probably the sooner the better so it just doesn't sit there and get weathered. Um, either selling the maroon truck down here um, because it's pretty old, but we do use it occasionally. So we have a part-time public works employee, uh, Zach, who goes around. He does our sets our water meters and blue stakes. Um, he does some well testing stuff, uh, re records well stuff for me and stuff like that. So he works part-time for us. He uses that one when he does some of that work. Um, 
the thought was maybe we sell that one. Um, and this is just some ideas to throw out, open anything. And then we take the one I'm driving now, the, this gray one, and maybe make it the new maroon truck because it's about 13 years newer and we own it. Um, we'd have to pull some radios and lights and sirens because that is a response to a first, re uh, first response truck. It has lights and sirens and everything in it. We'd have to pull all that out, but turning that into maybe a public works truck, get a new fire chief slash public works truck uh, that, that I could use wearing both hats because that is a, a, a response truck that I use. Uh, when, I, when we respond, I go in that truck as, as usually first on scene. Um, and then the, get rid of the Kubota because we just don't use that a lot. And the Skidster that we have, I think, a lease on. And possibly get like a rubber tired backhoe. Because aren't we going to sell... The big orange, too? We are selling. Big orange has already been approved to be, be sold by this council. So big orange is getting sold. No one likes that truck. Uh, there was only one guy who ever really liked to drive it, and he doesn't work for us anymore. Mm -hmm. So no one will drive it. Uh, it's, it's getting old as well. So that one's going up for sale. Um, the thought is with the new snowplow trucks, we could, you know, those, those can most, for the most part, handle the snow. The orange truck was being used to widen a couple of the roads when we had to come back after the snow was done. Uh, we would widen the roads because those 550s won't quite widen roads. They, they can, but you get that bank, and sometimes it will bend the plows. But if we get a, a rubber tire backhoe with a bucket on it and then get a snow plow attachment for it, they can use that to widen roads, and we won't have big orange anymore. We could also use that for any kind of, kind of trenching we need, we can also use it for loading the salt in the trucks. So, in other words, one piece of equipment to replace three. Um, three that are breaking down. And then, like I said, get the new public works slash fire chief truck. And the discussion is, do we buy them? Do we lease them? Um, and that's where kind of the question of when you go through leasing companies, and, and Chris knows a little bit more of this than I do, they tend to like you give you the best of the best because they're going to resell them once your lease is up and you're replacing it, right? So they, they that's when citizens are going to see us getting upset. Yeah, we're going to make them a little more angry because they're going to see some nice trucks out there. And it's like, well, you don't understand that it doesn't cost us anymore. It's just much more. It's just they get yeah. better. The leasing companies like it because they get more money for their or return on their investment there. So, so that's kind of the ideas we've had. Big Orange is going. Get rid of the Kubota and the Skidster. To replace those three, we get one rubber tired backhoe with a snowplow attachment. Um, maybe take this gray truck, replace, get rid of the maroon truck, and replace the, use the gray one in place of the maroon one. Get a new chief public slash public works truck. Um, and then the question mark is our service truck that we have now. Do we use that? The crane on it doesn't meet OSHA. It's not compliant with OSHA. They, they failed it. Um, we'd have to replace the crane if we were going to use that. We don't use the service truck only for, usually for plowing and widening the cul-de-sacs, but if we had the snowplow attachment on a rubber tire backhoe, we could do the same thing. But you need the crane? You don't need the crane? Wouldn't need the, the crane, and we can't use it anyway because it doesn't meet OSHA. They, they, OSHA came up and inspected it, and it failed. If you were to get a new truck, would you want a truck with a crane? You know, we thought about that, and I don't know that we would need one. Um, what Corbett, I think, used that crane for was to lift PRVs out of the vaults. So we have pressure-reducing valves that are inside vaults around the city, and that's what reduces the pressure in our water system as it goes downhill. And these can be kind of heavy, you know, a couple hundred, three hundred pound valves. Backhoe. Backhoe. Our new backhoe, we just chain it up and lift them out. Um, rather than have a crane to do that with. And, and likely, we won't be doing that a whole lot. Um, what I've, we've got a little different approach to how we're going to be handling maintenance of our system. Uh, Corbett was a very hands-on guy, liked to be out there doing the work himself. I, I don't really do that kind of stuff, and, and not really what I was hired by the city to do. We're putting out an RFP right now to bring three on-call, con at least three, maybe more, uh, contractors on call that will be available 24-7 to us. If we have an emergency, we can call them, get up here to help us fix water lines, roads, whatever, but also do some of our maintenance work for us in addition to the emergency so we can call them and say, hey. So the idea is that if we have something that needs to be done in PRV vault, likely we would just have them do it, and they'll bring their equipment to do it with. Um, I think your idea with a uh, snowblower is probably good, especially in heavy snow year. Yeah. Snowblower or snowplow? 
no blower uh, attachment for the front of the backhoe. You would have a blower attachment. A blower attachment. So we could use that to widen some of the roads. What we were doing with Big Orange, we could go along and use that to widen some of the roads, help clean up some of the cul-de-sacs. Um, bring it down my driveway. Bring it down, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll, have to start, you'll have to start talking to the drivers for that one. But, and then we could also use it for digging up water. You know, If we need to dig up something, it's got a backhoe on it, so you can also use it for repairs and maintenance and excavation work. You can also use the bucket on it to load the salt truck so we don't need the skid steer anymore. Uh, ish. What's that? Ish. Ish, yeah. It's got a really small one. Um, Detachable. It's essentially replacing the Kubota, but just with something bigger and more reliable. The Kubota and the Skidster and the orange truck is what this would replace. Are you looking at a new backhoe, used backhoe? Uh, I think the idea is we'd maybe look at either, um, I, I don't know. We'd have to get some pricing to see where it comes in and see where it fits with our budget once we, you know, if we sell these vehicles. Um do we, you know, the question is, do we lease one? Is it cheaper to lease it? Uh, do we buy one? I, yeah, I don't, that's a good question. Do we look for it in the used market? That's a good question. I, I hate to go too old because that's how our Kubota is right now, and it drips a lot of oil. Uh, the Skister's getting old. The service truck's old. I mean, I, I'd like to keep them fairly newer because, we're, you know, the older you get, the more money you spend maintaining them. And yeah, and the Skidster currently is on a lease through Cat Wheeler. <laughs> I want to live. Is up. It's we're on month to month, so it's up. I think June or July one. I've got a note in my calendar to call them to cancel the lease. Um, Ted, we might want to call Wheeler or whoever and see about costs on it on the backhoe with the attachments you need, so we can at least um, see what pricing. Is. Yeah. How soon do you need an answer on this, Ted? Probably real soon, right? Well, I I think, and, and we don't have to do this all at one time, and and I don't know that the mayor really was wanting to go that direction because his fear was that all of a sudden we sell everything and we've got all new equipment and how's that going to look to the citizens? Not realizing it's probably actually saving us money, but maybe we do this a piece at a time. I think the first thing we want to do is get rid of Corbett's truck because it's yeah. just going to sit there and get weathered, sell that one, possibly put the maroon truck up, switch this gray truck over to the maroon truck and get a new public works truck. Uh, fire chief. Corbett's truck as opposed to repurposing it. Or the, the fire this, chief truck. This 350, the 350 down here, the Corvus new one, it's just a little bit larger than makes is convenient to respond in. So I use it for a response truck, this one. Um, so if we get a new one, I would prefer just to have a 550, or a, excuse me, 150, just because when you're trying to respond in a 350 around here, it's narrow roads and it's it can get... Eight foot bed and... Eight foot bed, yeah. I'd rather have a smaller eight. bed. Um, but something I also want to divide, so I keep fire stuff in part of it, and also public work stuff because I'll use it for both. Uh, but so usually the I run a blue book on that truck. Is it a Lariat? Do you know? It is. So a 2018 F350 19. Okay, well this is going to be a little low then. 2018 Ford F350 Super Duty Crew Cab Lariat four door eight foot bed with the options we have trade in value is between 49.3 and 55.6. So it's got a lot of value still and we own that truck outright. So the 2019 is gonna be worth just a little bit more. Um, with the, if we do a public service truck slash uh, fire chief truck, I would recommend that we look at this lease through um, uh, the companies that lease to municipalities. And they like to typically lease through two to three years we get the trucks at a very discounted rate um, and then they just turn around and sell it at the end for us and we don't have to mess with it. But Ted is right. They're going to want leather seats and what roll down windows, yeah. automatic windows and that stuff. But with it being a public works truck, are you more likely to damage it more than it would be if it were um, just an EMS type response truck? Um, yeah, and that's, that's a good question. Uh, the one I have now that I use, I haul quite a bit of public work stuff in it as well. Um, I, I don't like, I don't really, the, the, I don't know, the revamp approach to the way we're working the city is more of a management style than a hands-on. So I won't be doing a lot of hands-on stuff. 
but I still do some. Uh, yeah, like when we that was the argument behind getting Corbett's 350 was he would go rent equipment and needed to be able to haul it up the hill, and so a 350 was necessary to do that because mm. he was so hands on. Um, the management style, I think, is probably more sustainable for us than Corbett's was never sustainable. I mean, he was always burned out. Yeah. And so I would be doing a lot of what Corbett was doing. The snowplow trucks can haul if we need to. So there'll be 550s with their, if we ever had to get a big piece of equipment up here. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. yeah, we've got that's the 550s. True. And so the, the, I mean, that's a good question. We thought about that. Did we just reuse this one? It's just the value of it. I think we can get a quite a bit out of it. I, I'd got the Kelly Blue Books sent, or the Carfax or whatever that service is, had sent me the same thing, Chris, the other day on it. Um, I think we could get some great value out of that and get a, a, like a 150. That's a better response truck. Um, the concept or the, the, we'll call it SOP of the fire department. Um, I actually drive that truck home. And if we get a call, say during the middle of the night, I go in that truck and get there first, because if it's a cardiac arrest or something, I can start CPR while we're waiting for the ambulance and others to get there. So it's, it's, it's a kind of a quick response truck. We call it, um, so it's it's easier if it's a little smaller vehicle than a 350 to do that in. Well, plus just gas and I mean everything 350 is going to be a little more expensive to run. Is it a gasoline engine or diesel? This one's a diesel. The 350 is a diesel. So if you're if you're responding, uh, Ted, you need equipment. Is there something you can install in the bed of that truck that will help you from an equipment standpoint? Um. Yeah, we'll probably put, uh, I, I might look at putting some bands. The biggest thing is just the cover over the bed. That's nice because I do carry like my fire turnouts in there. Because if I go right to a scene, I'm not coming here. And Are you talking about a topper? Or just a yeah, those bed covers you get on them. Or even a topper would help. I know a lot of them put toppers on them, either one. But just something to keep it dry in there because I keep a lot of, I keep my turnouts and well, stuff and in there. So if you're going to put stolen. a topper on it to where you can't use the bed to dump stuff in, why bother doing the truck? Why not just an SUV? <laughs> <clears throat> and you could, but I like carrying shovels and stuff like that. I I probably won't be putting any dirt in it. Um, and, and an SUV is an option. I think the F-150 gives us a little more flexibility in what we haul in the back of it. Um, well, if you get the bed covers, because my husband has one, you can just fold them up and you can still use them. Yeah, you and that's what I do with it. This one's a fold-up cover. Okay, not a hard top. No, just the, the bed cover, and you just fold them, and we yeah. have one on ours, and we take I've, them off. Yeah, I've got them on my we'll trucks. And stuff. You got lights in that? I do have lights and sirens and a radio in there. So, and the radio we would repurpose. We would take it out of here and put it in a new truck just because it's uh, it, they're expensive. Uh, I'd, I'd look at the lights and siren package, whether it's worth pulling out of this and putting a new one, or do we just get it with a new package, lights and sirens package? But I think it makes sense what Ted's talking about. So, Me too. how does the count the council? Mm -hmm. and the, you looked at this at all, and you're. Yeah, we talked about it, but we wanted we want they wanted finance to just kind of deliberate it a little bit and, you know, come to a, they looks, want our recommendation. Looks better if it comes from finance then. Here, here's the thing, the, the, the previous model, and citizens complained about this one too, was having Craig, who could repair the equipment, having Corbett, who would use the equipment. And there was always this you know, why do you need two people? Well, the answer was because we had really old equipment and we were constantly having to do maintenance on it. And it was cheaper to let Craig do that, although we had to then pay his salary. So, you know, you can make the argument which is better. I think what Ted's explaining is that his model is more of a management model where he manages the things that need to get done, contracts out with, um, with other people to actually do the work. If you're going to do it that way, then you don't have a person to keep your old things running. So you kind of have to go more the leasing model where you trade them in every three years or whatever. Um, that's what Salem does. Mm -hmm. a lot of, that's what a lot of cities do. I will also tell you that the other thing that Salem does is they always have them be the same color so that citizens can't tell that they got yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's not a bad idea. If, if people are going to get their shorts in a wad over that, then whatever. Just yeah. make them all white. You mean they're all the same? They keep them the same color so citizens will know that they got a new one? They don't know. All, their, 
all their city trucks are white. And and this one, I mean, I, I would switch this color out the first time, but then as we get going through some lease, you know, like you said, keep it the same color all the time, look like the same truck. Um, same only those style. people that are truck aficionados that know, yeah. wait a minute, that's the 2022. I can tell the lights are slightly different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it really is, it's a logical extension of the management model. So you're either going to have to hire more people to keep your equipment up, or you're going to have to lease and have less people. So, and, and with these lease options come maintenance packages through the lease company. And so we can just hire them to maintain them as well, or to pay a lease package for them to maintain them. Um, and, and maybe just a, a quick explanation. I, I think the way I've been explained to people is, is the city did really great with Corbett, what he was doing. It was a hands-on guy. He would like to be out fixing and working things and did a great job. I, you know, I got along and worked well with he Corbett. Was always in the hole. Always in the hole. The challenge was the city's growing enough. It was becoming very difficult for him to keep up with all of that. And it was also a challenge for him to step back and manage it. And the paperwork. And the paperwork. So we're starting to change that style a little bit just because of our growth and the need to be more of a management style than a hands-on. So to do that, we have to shift some of our model on how we're doing handling equipment and stuff like that. And that's where this is just one of many pieces we're putting in place with asset management. We're calling it planning. Um, we're doing it with all our utilities and our roads. We're building asset management plans right now so we can be you know, proactive and plan and track rather than just One other thing that I react. like about it is with an asset plan, and it was something that we were trying to put in place, was in fact one of the very first <coughs> things we did with finance committee is we said, okay, what assets do we have and how often do they need to be replaced? Okay, now let's build that into a budget. Well, with a leasing model, that's kind of done for you. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you don't have to worry about Oh yeah, that truck's now five years old. Uh, you know, so, whatever. and with the leasing, if there's anything catastrophic on a vehicle, they'll take care of it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can sell some of these vehicles, and I, I don't know how the financing works. Chris is much better at that than I just know how to spend the money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do at home too. I just keep spending money until my wife says, "Whoa, wait a minute," um, which is probably the opposite of most households, but it works well for us. Um, so. You know, with the sale of some of these vehicles, we can apply that towards the of our lease for quite a few years, you know, or pay back leases for a lot of time. Corbett's vehicle out here, is it on a lease or is it? We own it. We own it. Own it. We own it. So whatever we sell it for, we'll get that cash. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't think there's going to be a huge loss on that vehicle because, you know, we got some, I think we, we got it on a pretty good price with state, with the state procurement and to sell it, I think we'll, we'll not lose a lot of money on him having that vehicle. How many but years was it used? It's a 2019, so we had it what four? You got it new, so it'd be about three, three and a half, four years. Um, yeah. That was the thing that you know the citizen, some citizens were angry over it, but man, that was one of the best decisions the city made. Yeah, we won't lose we probably any money on that. The state, um, and we got um, maintenance with it too. People don't understand, though, like I didn't before I was on city council about the state procurement. Procurement. Can't yeah, say yeah. Word tonight. So but how they could, it's such a discount, such a big discount. So if you can buy a truck and sell it four years later and only be out 5000 <coughs> 10000 whatever it is, our, our losses. But we say, yeah, but we just got a really good truck used for, I don't know how many miles. You said 42000 so we're getting ten, twelve thousand 12,000 miles a year out of this thing, then, yeah, we did great. Yeah, we did great. It was a good decision. The so, other thing they were always mad about is that taking the truck home. But yeah. But you have to to be able to respond. So as a, a, I lives up here, so how can the citizens complain about that? I know. Yeah, and we talked about that for quite a while as, as part of the department, the fire department, whether to keep it here or not. Um, but then ultimately it came down to is being able to uh, have a much quicker response in, in the event. And, and, you know, I don't, I don't think people realize that these events are not unfrequent up here. Yeah. Um, you, you probably don't see them a lot or hear them a lot because a lot of them happen in the middle of the night. But to be able to have someone get there quickly is a lot of, of value to our citizens. Um, so that's what I just leave right from my house and go right there. I don't have to come to the station and and, um, and then get in a vehicle and go there. We have people doing that, so I can go right there. And When we were doing some of the town hall, well, just some of the meetings recently and 
especially with this development coming in and going into people's homes. Anyway, I just didn't realize how many older people we have. We have a lot of older people in our community. Yeah. So that makes sense that you're going out on a lot of calls. I'm and just curious, and I'm sorry for the squirrel here, the divergent. How many calls do you think we would respond to a year? A year or a month? A year. I think say a month. What's that? 15. Yeah, about double that. We're we're close to we depending on the year between seventy five and hundred years how many calls we have. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a self call I guess I should say. Uh, one of our department members lives right across the street. <coughs> he saw what had happened and it wasn't an emergency because no one was in it. He was just ta he got the fire truck took it there just to be uh, to help with cleanup and stuff like that. Listen but, to all of us. Make sure when you park a vehicle on a hill that. Your brakes Your work, brakes work. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, whose house was that at? No, it's it's not a HIPAA thing. So it's not it's not medical. So it, uh, I got my theme on too. Oh. You've seen that all those retaining walls they come down. Uh huh. There's a truck parked up on the rock and all those retaining walls and I had them on the shoulder. Oh. Totally, totally, oh. totally. Oh. Could you the vehicle? Oh. And he, had, he had a big, um, like a generator. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it totally, pretty well destroyed the generator. Oh, man. Yeah, it was, it was, it was an unfortunate thing. Yeah. We're just glad nobody was in the vehicle when it happened and, and no one got hurt. So. And John Wallace just went, what was that? Looks yeah, like he was the one that he, 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 I was actually down meeting in a meeting and he called me and said, hey, I'm going to take the fire engine up and. Just so, be there to help clean up. So, Ted, on, on your truck, and from a finance point, this is financial, but you can put a topper on there that you can lock. Mm -hmm. You can automatically lock it, so you don't have to go back and lock it all the time. You know, it costs about $300 for that system, but that's probably a good system. For yeah. You. You'll have things in there that needs to be locked. Yeah, and no, this one doesn't now. In fact, you can open it when the truck's locked. Um, and this truck oh, out here, the new ones, though, the tailgate and that's how my truck is. I've got a 150. My tailgate, so I've got a topper on it like that, and I pull it, and you have to have the tailgate down to open it. Right. But my tailgate locks, so they can't bring the tailgate down to open the topper. Now it's vinyl, so you could just slash it open and take yeah, whatever you want. But, but, um, yeah, but, I, anyway, but it, it deters. Your service to, to do what you're doing. Yeah, we do have some expensive, just even fire equipment back there, but. So I think the proposal is probably on this initial blush is sell Corvus truck because that one should go right away. And the maroon uh, one. And the maroon one. Um, take this gray one, replace it with a new one, and then use it for our call it, we'll call it our public works truck, assistant, assistant truck. Yeah, it's one that. Yeah, that one other question. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the skid steer and some of the that other equipment, are there better times of the year to sell than others? That is a good question. That is a good question. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. The snow plow equipment, we decided to do right away because it's probably better why it's snowing probably to sell it. Probably in the spring, like early spring. Wouldn't but you the Kubota and Skidsters, probably when people start using those a little more often, maybe the springtime. Yeah, I would think early spring because of construction. Spring or summer. So here's here's the reason I bring that up. I know the mayor wanted to like, you know, be a little clandestine, whatever. Um, I think it's more important to try and hit the market yeah. that makes sense um, so that we can get the best value out of it. Well, the snow plow equipment is the one that's a hot ticket item right now. Big Orange has already been approved to sell, so we can just do that ASAP. And then the other stuff is not till spring, so we got a couple months before we put that out. And the trucks are good year-round. And then as far as the backhoe, you can just hide it in the salt shed until... <laughs> Tell people, yeah, yeah. We'll Until next winter. We'll sneak it around. Well, we'll get a camouflaged one. How's that? We'll sneak around town. <laughs> um, I don't think the citizens will be upset. I, I think if they listen to these meetings, we're explaining that we're really getting a lot of, rid of a lot of old equipment. We're going to use those proceeds to get new equipment. And, you know, I don't know that's going to take anything out of the budget. So we're, in addition to selling the snow, the orange big O, we're also selling two snowplow blades that we've had for years and don't use, and two salt spreaders that have just been hanging down there at the salt shed that we've never used. So we're selling those as well right now. Why do we have spreaders that we bought that we never used? 
Be That's a good question. <laughs> brand new hearts? No, they're not. Um, we bought them from <coughs> somewhere back in the Midwest. Um, Corbett and uh, his friend down there. Um, no. Went, no, went to the Midwest. I think it was somewhere in Iowa, and picked them up and brought them. <coughs> up. And it was for, for parts, which is not a bad. I mean, they were super cheap. But the, it, it actually cost us more to go get them than it did to buy them. And having those parts is kind of invaluable. If, you know, so, and this is my question parts. with the supply chain issues and delays. Like, if we sell all this, are we going to put ourselves, is it something that we would need? Is, are we going to put ourselves in a bind by selling, like, the blades and the So, the, the blades and the spreaders, no, we've never used those. Okay. Um, so, we've got spreaders. These are just spares, like, except for parts. And we, we wouldn't use those. Um, of value as parts, were they no longer compatible with the current spreaders that we have? No, they would, they would, well, so with the current spreaders, probably they would work, but we're getting the new ones in April and we wouldn't need the parts. So, the, the, and I don't know that they actually ever got used. They were, yeah, I think the idea was the concept was to have them for parts, but I don't think they ever got used for parts. I, oh. They've just been, uh, down, they just sit, they're just sitting down in salt shed. I don't think they've ever used them, so taking up space. And same with the blades. They were bought as spare blades, but we've never needed them and never used them. So the idea is let's let's start. And we're running out of space in our building. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we got trucks sitting out here just because we're running out of room. So it's time to start de-junking de and and take a little bit better approach to get you know like one piece of equipment that can replace three we're using now. And Corbett wanted to add on to this building. That was one of his. Which, by the way, you know, going back to the citizens, I maybe there's only about four or five citizens that get their shorts in a lot of yeah. They just happen to be a little louder. Almost every other citizen I've ever talked to, is, once you explain it, they're pretty reasonable. Yeah. And maybe that can be a TED Talk. Yeah. You can explain to the citizens. By the way, is that copyrighted? <laughs> I got thinking about that after I saw it come out. Uh, hmm. No, it's just, I just made a title page. I didn't test, use a logo for yours, right? But do they have the phrase TED Do they have the phrase trademark? Well, it they're might, TED. It might be, but you can't trademark a person's name. Yeah. No, that's true. They're TED Talk, aren't they? And I put TED Talks for you, uh, I think. Gotcha. And I did Wayne's World because it's old. Because Wayne's word is the fisherman and it's current and still active. So I didn't steal that one because I figured somebody would come after me. So I did Wayne's world, which is an old, so that hopefully I wasn't, nobody would get mad at me. It has for... to be 100 years, though. You know what I got to say to that? Schwing! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you use, if, if, if the finance committee recommends that we just start selling off some of this solar equipment, I, I mean, it'd probably be smart to maybe try and time the new stuff because if we're going to be waiting you know eight months to get a backhoe so it probably wouldn't probably wouldn't be we don't want to sell we'd probably want to hang on to the skidster and the Kubota um, so let me do a little work into figuring out what it would take and cost for something like that but I think as far as the trucks go that's something we can do right away and 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 the equipment let me do a little work on that but and maybe maybe it's a matter of recommending we do it to the council once we get more information on timing to get a backhoe and stuff like that. Well, they'll, they'll ask me for a report, so. We can put this into a motion for giving a recommendation to the council, and I'm willing to do that. I just put it into a motion and take a vote on it and see where we're at. But and I think it's actually on the agenda for the next council meeting, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so. So I will make that motion that we consider all the things that Ted has discussed with us tonight and uh, recommend to the council that it is approved and to move forward. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Any opposed? Thanks. Oh, any opposed? <laughs> okay, motion carried. <laughs> okay. All right, so any other um, matters of discussion amongst the committee? Let, let me just ask one last question on the the work truck that we would be taking your current truck and converting into the work truck. Is that right? Into the so we've got we've got a work truck and a utility truck. Um, yes. Yeah, so taking this truck and, and possibly using it now we don't have to. That's an option. Do we want to just get rid of them all and 
but we do, we do have that maroon one down there that's Corbett's old, old one, 2000, that is breaking down a lot. So to have something is nice. So yeah, to take this one, the one I drive now, turn it into the work truck. I like that terminology. Uh, so that that's what, like I said, that's the one our uh, part-time guy uses to go out and do blue stakes. And he keeps all of his stuff in the back of it for setting meters and blue staking. And uh, he does well readings and some sampling and stuff like that for me. He so. helps me some too. He's helping he helps. me. He, he hauls around and helps when we set up for... You know, so I'm over days, events, and, and so we I use it with lights, and he There's came with ladders and helped with that. that so that's what I was going to get at. If he's hauling ladders and tables and big yeah. equipment, then a truck makes sense. As yeah, to a smaller. Vehicle. Yeah, he does. He it's hauls just, big ladders and stuff. Okay. And he and 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 then at some point we're going to talk about the utility truck. That's the one that has the crane on it. And I, once what again, Tuesday, but, and it, it is on the agenda. But. We'll start the process of looking into it. And the utility truck we'll look into as part of the replacement with a rubber tire backhoe. So to see if it makes sense not to keep that anymore if, if, cause no one uses it right now, other than we use it to, like I said, during plow season, just to clean out some of the cul-de-sacs. And, but if we can find something else to do that with and get rid of that as well, then I just. All right, anything else on to be discussed tonight amongst the committee in terms, I don't think there's any public comment because there's Think there's any public on <coughs> mm -mm. anything else okay uh next meeting to be determined uh that's gonna chris is gonna have to dictate that one right for budget stuff do, do we need to look at yeah do you want to find out from the mayor how he wants to proceed with the finance committee and the budgets and then yeah get an email going i can do that we can set a tentative one and then see if we need to change it if you want. Okay, when 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 is what does your gut tell you, Chris, in terms of timing on it? Of when we need to start getting budget from the department heads. Mm -hmm. like department head. By the yeah. first mid mid March. <laughs> first of March? Mid March, yeah. Okay, then I would recommend uh, Let's see, this meeting was the second Wednesday or the first Wednesday? First Wednesday. So I would recommend the first Wednesday in March. That's the 6th of March. I'm okay with that. It looks like longer. And we can start to talk more in depth of getting our budgets going for the next fiscal year. Um, and then I'll talk to the mayor and if there's something different that he needs us to do, but I'll let him know that. I usually Schedule. clear those with Jody, but this one was good. I'm assuming that one will be good also. That's Probably. a good day for me. I'll find that day. Good day for you, Aaron. Yeah. Okay. We'll plan on uh, then our tentatively until we hear from the mayor. And 7 p.m. is on the 6th of March. Same time? 7 p.m. Same time. 7 okay. But that time works. If you want to do earlier, we can do earlier. It's nice to it – take. I don't get home till 6, so. Okay. It's, Aaron, you okay with 7? Yeah. Does that work for you? Then we can have dinner, you know. Yeah, it works oh, yeah, for you. Fine. Okay. Thank you, Ted, for coming, and thanks yeah, everybody. Yeah, thanks for good and information. I don't think we need a motion of adjournment. We'll just adjourn. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Let me go turn it off. Good seeing you guys. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, thanks Chris. Chris. Have a great night, guys. Enjoy the beach. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Is it raining down there now? No, he left. No. Thanks, everybody. My wife's at Bryce Canyon.